Hi Aaron, you told me the other day that you helped a small business evolve their serverless app? Yes, I did. As their business was growing, they went through several iterations of their application architecture. Couldn't they just have picked the correct architecture right away? Well, at each stage of their growth, they picked the minimum technology to support their business, which I think was really smart. By iterating their architecture, they could learn from each stage and they avoided spending a lot of money up front. Can't wait to hear more. All right, Aaron, what kind of a business is it? So it's a mobile hairdresser and makeup business for special events like weddings. Unlike a salon, they perform the service at the client's location. It sounds like a lot of businesses are similar to that, like plumbers, electricians, and so on. Well, I would say the one major difference is that the quality of makeup and hair is much more subjective. So the client and the owner really need to have a strong mutual understanding of what the service will be before the owner agrees. Ah, so what was the first iteration of their workflow? It was very bare bones. They didn't have to write any code at all. What? No code at all, Aaron? Well, if a business can get away with writing no code, they should. It'll mean lower upfront costs and less maintenance down the road. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So here it is. Customers would call in to schedule an appointment. The business owner would take the call and write down the appointments in a Google Sheet. Well, that's about as simple as it can get. Uh, but it seems like a lot of work for the owner. Yes, it was. And it wasn't great for customers either because they could only make appointments when the business owner was available on the phone. Got it. So how did they simplify the process? Uh, they built a website? Yeah, for a while they wanted to make a website that could display their work, link to social media to follow the artist, and answer FAQs about the services. Still, they didn't want to write code for their own forms or a backend to store responses. Yeah, it sounds like that would be a lot of extra work. Uh, did they find a better way? Well, they hosted the site in Firebase Hosting and put a link to a Google form in their site that would send inputs directly to their Google Sheets, which they were already comfortable using. And this is important. They're designing this workflow around what they are already good at. So now customers could request appointments anytime, even if the owner wasn't there, but the owner can still see everything the way they're used to. I like it. Still not much code uh, besides a static HTML website but partial automation of the workflow. Uh, so are they still using that setup? Well, as the business started to grow, the owner was getting more client requests than they could handle. Likewise, from working in the industry, they naturally started to meet other makeup artists who would occasionally refer clients when they were overbooked. Ah, so the owner didn't need to hire their own employees. Uh, artists could just work with them temporarily as needed. Exactly. And the owner didn't want to share the entire Google Sheet with these other artists just the customer information that mattered for the specific jobs that artist was working on. They also needed a way for the other artists to give status updates like job complete or appointment canceled. So now they need to manage these artists somehow? To an extent, but this part of the business should run itself as much as possible so that the owner only really needs to intervene if there was something like a last minute cancellation. And how would the existing architecture help them with this? Well, the owner needed a different approach for managing the other artists. They wanted dynamic updates to and from Google Sheets and some form of auth to only let assigned artists see their specific clients. This should be a separate experience from the front end that customers see. Hmm. Sounds like a developer would be needed for that. Uh, how did the developer build on their existing architecture? Well, the owner found a freelance developer who could meet those requirements at the right price. Now, the owner didn't insist on a particular tech stack or cloud provider because those types of preferences were beyond their expertise as an owner, and they trusted the developer to use what worked. The developer preferred containers as a single deployment unit that could go anywhere. That's a good reason for using containers. Yeah, the developer's container met the needs, it was easy and manageable, and they deployed the whole app in Cloud Run as a single container. Ah, so they just connected uh, the Cloud Run app to Google Sheets? Yes, and you did a video about that. Yes, I did. I'll, I'll share the link in the description. Uh, and after that, they were all done? Sheets were great for them at a small scale. But as the business grew even further, they felt the need for a proper database. Sheets is really designed for several humans to use at the same time, not for several applications to be constantly adding or looking up information. A sheet doesn't perform at scale compared to a proper database. Wouldn't moving to a database be a big jump? In this case, the developer wanted to use Firestore, which would be a smooth transition. It was easier for the developer to set up and connect to Forms and Cloud Run. And since Firestore is serverless, 
it's much easier to set up and manage than a self-hosted database. Firestore seems great for the applications connected to it, uh, but what did the owner think? Well, remember, the owner liked Sheets because they were familiar with it. They could do weekly analytics to see trends in their business, such as the frequency of new appointments or what times of the year were getting the most heavily booked. And these aren't trivial issues either. They affect pricing and the demand for artists, so they're important for the owner to stay on top of. And it sounds like they missed those requirements when they replaced Sheets with Firestore. Exactly. But this situation is easy to recover from. These are pieces you can take out and put back in. So Firestore belongs in the place of a database, yes, but you can export the data to Google Sheets to make it easier to analyze and navigate for the owner. So with all the things we've added and improved... It all started and ended with a Google Sheet. So one thing that was really clear in this case was the focus on the small business. Even though it's a very simple application, every business should care about keeping complexity to a minimum. And it sounds like you should be fine with updating your architecture as requirements change. Yes, the idea that you have this perfect image on day one just isn't reality. And it's actually better to expect and be able to adapt to change. So owners need to make sure their needs are being met regardless of the tools. And developers should have the freedom to build things that meet those requirements. And I think one thing we noticed is that serverless patterns are great at supporting both owners and developers because of their flexibility. Well, thank you for sharing their journey with us, Aaron. And thank you, everyone, for watching. You will find a link to the other episode we talked about in the show notes. Uh, if you have any questions for Aaron and me, or suggestions for future serverless topics, please enter them in the comments below. We read every single comment. Until next time.